Let me just preface this video by saying this is not going to be a long, exhaustive discussion on everything that is FM synthesis. That is literally a whole course in and of itself. King Unique did a really fantastic course right here on Sonic Academy all about uh, FM or frequency modulation synthesis. So that's not the aim of this specific video, but what I do want to do in this video is talk about what does it mean if I am not really using a full-on FM synthesizer, but I see an FM control, or I can toggle an FM control on somewhere in my synthesizer? What does that mean for me, and, and what's going on under the hood there? So in the case of Anna 2, that's exactly what we have here. We have each of our three main oscillators has an FM control, as we can see right here. Again, if you're using X for Serum, you'll see an FM control. Uh, you can assign FM from oscillator A or oscillator B to frequency modulate the other oscillators. But neither this nor X for Serum are known as full-on FM synthesizers, but they do have some FM capabilities under the hood here. So, you know, if I, if I don't have a setup where I have different algorithms and my oscillators are all interconnected and operating on each other in different ways, what does it mean when I have an FM control? on my subtractive synthesizer or my wavetable synthesizer or whatever. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So um, real quick, let's just talk about what FM or frequency modulation is and what it means. If you remember from a few videos back when we talked about the components of sound, all sound has one of its, one of its three components is pitch or frequency. And I made a point that pitch and frequency are basically two words for the same thing. So if we you know follow that uh, logically, if pitch is the same thing as frequency, then frequency modulation is the same thing as pitch modulation. So a really simple example of pitch modulation is, I'm gonna take this initialized patch that I changed my oscillator one over to a sine wave, and we can see the uh, tone I'm playing here, the pitch I'm playing, the volume, the amplitude, and we can see the oscilloscope showing that it's a sine wave, right? So I'm gonna take this, and then I'm gonna go down here to the LFO, and I'm gonna use an LFO, we'll just keep the same, the default shape, sine wave, for this LFO, and we're gonna modulate the pitch of this oscillator. So let's choose our LFO target as oscillator one. I'm gonna choose oscillator one pitch course. It's just gonna give me a broader range of pitches to modulate across. And we're gonna turn up the modulation depth. Let's maybe turn the rate down a little bit. Not too much. And as we turn the modulation depth up, we see the pitch kind of moving up and down as we would expect. So we're doing pitch modulation, right? We're using an LFO as a modulation source or modulating the pitch of this oscillator. So we're basically doing FM, that's all we're doing. But we're doing it at a very slow rate. So traditionally with FM synthesis, this process is gonna happen much, much faster at a faster rate. So check this out. If I start to turn my rate up, we can see the rate right now of my LFO is, it's pretty low, hence the name low frequency oscillator, right? It's 1.61 Hertz, pretty slow. But this can actually go up to a whopping 200 hertz if we want to, which would technically be in the audible range. If this LFO was connected or routed to the amplifier, we would hear this LFO, but it's not. So it's just kind of doing this fast modulation under the hood. But as we do this, look at our harmonic spectrum here. We're actually adding harmonics or adding overtones to the sound and subharmonics as well. If we increase the depth more, we change those, change the relationships there. So what I'm doing right now is very, very basic FM, very, very basic frequency or pitch modulation. Now, the difference here though, when I'm using the LFO, is if I play different notes on the keyboard, it doesn't sound really that sexy because the LFO is not key tracking. It's not tuning itself to the pitches I'm playing on the keyboard, whereas my oscillator one up here is. So we get just these drastically different tones as I play different notes on the keyboard, you can see my notes lighting up down here. It just sounds kind of weird. This would be cool for a sound effect maybe, but I probably wouldn't use this musically in any way. So this is where the FM control on your oscillator is gonna come into play here. So let's turn the LFO off. We'll just kind of reset its destination to nothing, turn the depth all the way down. So we're back to our sine wave. Now we can see here this FM control on oscillator one just above it. This is connected to it. This is related to it. It says source oscillator two, oscillator three. In fact, all of these oscillators have slightly different source listings. So if we go to oscillator two, we can use oscillator three or the sub oscillator as a source. If we go to oscillator three, we can only use its sub oscillator as a source. But let's hop back over to oscillator one. Now, if I start to turn the FM control up, 
This might be another source of confusion is, hey, it's not really doing anything, what gives? Well, we currently have its source set to oscillator two. So in our example a few minutes ago, the LFO, LFO one was acting as the quote unquote source or the in FM terminology, this was acting as the modulator wave, whereas oscillator one here is acting as the carrier wave. So oscillator two is supposed to be our modulator wave, but if we go to oscillator two, oscillator two is inactive. There are zero voices, so it's not playing anything. So we need to give it at least one voice. Now here's the issue though. I hear oscillator two, which is a saw wave, just blaring over my sine wave over here. So we're gonna turn oscillator two all the way down. So as long as we give it at least one voice and we turn its volume all the way down, it's still gonna be active now. It's still gonna be useful to us as a modulator oscillator. So let's go back to oscillator one. And now if we start to turn the FM control up, we start to introduce frequency modulation. We're adding harmonics to the sound, subharmonics. Now this is a little harsh though. So I would recommend when you get started with this, let's go back to oscillator two. Let's maybe use another sine wave as our modulation oscillator or our modulator oscillator. Okay, so now we're gonna get slightly smoother, more traditional FM kind of a sound. And you can see as we turn this FM control up, we're increasing the depth of modulation, of frequency modulation from oscillator two, which is our modulator wave, into oscillator one, which is our carrier wave. And things, of course, start to get more interesting. If, you know, if you've used an FM synth before and you kind of like, okay, I can kind of take it from this point. I think I know what I'm doing. We can adjust the tunings of these two oscillators. And keep in mind, both of these are tracking the pitch of the keyboard. And both of these are oscillating at the exact same frequency right now. So we get a harmonically pleasing sound. I can play different notes on the keyboard and I can tell what pitches those are. But if we start to go to the tuning controls and let's go to oscillator one, for example, let's maybe bring its octave down to negative one. Now we have an octave difference between oscillator one and oscillator two, which is back up here at zero. We're gonna get a slightly different tone to the sound. If you go to oscillator two and maybe adjust its semitone tuning, and it's octave, go back to oscillator one, we get an even different, almost harsher sound. Okay, so the tunings, because we're tracking the pitch of the keyboard, but we're taking these oscillators and we're adjusting their tunings, we get slightly different tones or slightly different harmonics added to the sound. And then of course, this can be a lot of fun if we take this FM control and we modulate it. Let's maybe use our mod envelope again like we did with the sync control. So we'll right click, we'll choose our modulation source as mod envelope one, turn the modulation depth up, and let's start to adjust the envelope. start to get these very metallic bell-like sounds. Or if we increase the attack. Let's go to oscillator two. Maybe we'll change the octave. We start to get these kind of UK grime, UK garage kind of bass sounds. Okay. So the FM control on the oscillator is basically taking one of the other oscillators, using it as a modulation source, and then frequency modulating or pitch modulating it. But we're doing it in a, in a way or in a manner that is very, very fast, that is in the audible range. So we're getting something that's a little bit more akin to a traditional FM type of a sound rather than a more LFO-y pitch modulation type of sound where LFOs are generally vibrating or oscillating at much slower speeds below the audible range. So we get a more distinct movement of the pitch, almost like a vibrato type effect, rather than a new tone getting created like we're getting right here. Makes sense? So your FM dial in Anna 2, in X for Serum, yeah, even in Wavetable. Wavetable has one as well. We'll show that real quick. Again, it's gonna be in that oscillator effect section. If you go right here, FM, we can tune our FM oscillator that's kind of acting under the hood here. And then we can set the amount of frequency modulation and you can see how that changes the waveform. Cool. So FM in your subtractive and wavetable synthesizers, hopefully demystified. I'll see you in the next video. We'll get into RM or ring modulation and what that's all about.
thanks everyone for watching we really appreciate the support from you guys if you liked this video then you know smash that like button and if you want to be notified about new content hit the subscribe and the bell notifications peace